Now I know there's the film series with Nicolas Cage, but truly speaking, for us Canadians, Brendan Fraser is absolutely a national treasure. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, talking about The Mummy. I just went and saw the 25th anniversary showing at my local theater, and that was a treat because I did not see the film when it originally released back in 1999 in theaters. I remember absolutely being terrified watching this when I was a kid. Get out of here! particularly due to all of the transformation scenes and the scarabs. Scarab, fuck, look, god, those little things like still scare the shit out of me. I've enjoyed my rewatches of the film over the years. I remember watching the VHS a couple of times when I was younger and then even getting the DVD because my dad. Guys, it's still so good. The fact that Steven Summers made this movie he directed it, he wrote it. It's just kind of crazy considering where that guy's career went. He tried to replicate this sort of magic and lightning in a bottle with Van Helsing. And while I do personally really like Van Helsing for both the good and the bad reasons, it did not even touch the same absolute insane popularity that The Mummy did, and there is a lot of reasons why. The Mummy follows a group of characters led by Brendan Fraser's Rick O'Connell, Rachel Wise's Evie, and then Jonathan Hennison, Jonathan Carahan. You all right? Well, not sure. <sighs> On this quest to find the land of the dead, the city of the dead, a multitude of Egyptian pharaoh gold, but as well as mystery, intrigue and eventually dark evil magic in the form of Imhotep who was this high priest back during the Egyptian ages kind of fancied the pharaoh's uh, wife and uh, they kind of did a little bit of a killing for it and didn't work out too well Wor worked out really badly to the point where he was mummified alive and put into this curse this group of characters as well as some Americans and some other unsavory characters as well as one guy, Benny. Benny, played by Kevin J. O'Connor. Ah, what a surprise! My good friend, you're alive! Well, if it ain't my little buddy Benny, I think I'll kill you. <laughs> think of my children! You don't have any children. Just the fucking despicable little squeeze bag, but you, you kind of like him because he's so pathetic. Good Lord. They go and they find Imhotep's sarcophagus and they unwittingly and somewhat wittingly unleash him. That happens a lot around here. And this reign of terror, evil, and adventure happens for these characters. There's a lot of reasons why this movie is so loved. It's a lot of how this movie takes a lot of inspiration from different eras. It kind of goes without saying, but The Mummy is a remake of the old black and white universal horror movies. They combined the elements that made that one so popular back then, along with the hokey kind of action fever kind of shenanigans of Buster Keegan era, the stunt era, of, oddly enough, like the Three Stooges. Well, well, well. Let me guess. Spring clean. Oh, watch, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out! Taking inspiration from other films, uh, other kind of villainous characters, Dracula, really speaking, Imhotep's entire thing with getting his lady back uh, after all of these thousands of years his ox sunamun is fucking dracula and mina to the point where one point emotep raises his arms basically a bat outline there's a lot that's being borrowed from different eras of film from different eras of entertainment and it's molded together into this lightning in a bottle combo and it's led by a fantastically charismatic brennan fraser <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Benny. And an undeniably lovable Rachel Wise. Probably my first teenage crush was with Rachel Wise in this movie, like my actress crush, because she's absolutely adorable in this movie. Evie, hurry! You're not helping! <laughs>
I know she didn't come to like the character later on because yes it is a little bit of a bit character but she's just such a fantastic addition and going back to Brendan Fraser some of the jokes he has in this movie are fucking knee slappers <laughs> Like the part where the ship's on fire and Hassan comes up to O'Connell is like, what do we do? What do we do? And he says, wait here, I'll go get help. Right. Hassan, by the way, that guy's not in it as long, but I really wish he had a soundboard. Because, oh my God, some of the sounds he makes in this movie are so looking funny. And again, that relates back to what made this movie so popular is that it is a perfect combination of Humor, action, and horror. Every single scene with Imhotep getting his human persona hit through the regeneration bits. Fucking terrifying. The guy gets his eyes and his tongue ripped out. And the CG. This is back when they were still using practical and they were combining the two. And that's what works best. And that some fucking directors and some fucking studios just feel like, oh yeah, just do it CG. No. You want that realistic shit? This movie's from 1990 fucking nine. And some of the stuff holds up better than some of the Marvel stuff now. It's a combo. It's because they use practical shit and they would combine it and overlay it with the CG. The two in tandem create something that CG alone still cannot do because you don't have that physical, relatable material for the human eye to register and to take it into a valley of believability and not the uncanny valley. I'm amazed still by when he's like fully coming back. It's when he's got one more regeneration left and the bug comes out of his neck and out through and back into this hole in his mouth. How the flesh moves, like you know that's real. You know that there's something there for them to map against. And it's terrifying still. The fucking scarabs too, Jesus Christ. Ah, they still scare the shit out of me after all this time. However, there's one person I haven't talked about yet, Eredith Bay, like the whole secret society of warriors who are, you know, supposed to make sure that Imhotep doesn't come to life and they're kind of actually really fucking useless. They fuck up like five or seven times in this movie, but you still like him because the dude looks hot. Fabulous hair, great beard, chiseled chin, eyes that you could just lost into for hours. You, you can forgive him, basically, for being absolutely fucking useless in this movie. <laughs> Overall, though, what does The Mummy still have for those who have not seen it? It is a glimpse into what the sort of the silliness and the spontaneousness that the 90s still had, the late 90s still had for movie making, and the fact that you would not see shit like this now, and it, I'm not talking about any kind of cultural theft, which admittedly the locals are basically, hey, we've got something where people can die. Let's use the locals. <laughs> But it's this sort of taking a risk on something and, you know, just seeing how it turns out. Now there's so much bureaucrat and politic and kind of, oh, will this actually make us any kind of viewership? Will this play for demographic? What will it appease for the algorithm? They made this movie because they knew they had something funny and fun and terrifying on their hands but they didn't know just how good at all three it was going to be. The Mummy is a certified classic, and that's not just because Brendan Fraser's in it. I really got to rewatch George of the Jungle now thinking about it, but The Mummy is just gold, plain and fucking simple. In the end, I'm going to give The Mummy a 7 out of 7. I had a feeling that there would be maybe some nostalgia feel while rewatching it, and yes, there was a little bit, but some of it just hits so good. The jokes still work. The horror still works. The action's even better. Hearing some of the scenes uh, on a big screen were great, like, especially the horror stuff when all those... Oh my God. I could hear it around me. I never had that because we never had a, a sound system that really worked, and I know there are some people who do, and... I've been meaning to get one myself, but it doesn't beat the theater. Like, whatever you do with your home, it never can beat, like, the theater experience, at least for, for me, for sound. I had a blast just re-watching this again. But anyways, guys, that's enough rambling for me. What did you guys think about The Mummy? Did you see it back when you were a kid? Did you get a chance to see this? I'll admit, I didn't really know that this was happening. 
And I feel bad because it actually was supposed to happen yesterday, but the at the time of this recording, but the camera broke. So they rescheduled it to today, the next day. And I remember seeing some people come out of the theater. I was there to buy my ticket, and then I found out what happened. And I saw people dressed as Rick O'Connell and some dressed as Evie coming out of the theater. I didn't see any this time, so I'm a little, I'm a little sad that they missed out. But regardless, I, it was really fun to rewatch this. The fact that the movie theaters have actually been dipping into this the last little while is kind of great. Like I watched Spider-Man 2 at the beginning of this week, and now this is coming out. I really like how they're diving into this again because they know they can get movies from this. I just wish they would fucking advertise it better because I know so many people who did not know this was happening. Guarantee you, if you, a lot of people knew, if they did better at advertising, like, fuck for fuck's sakes, if this movie theater I use actually used their Facebook channel, maybe people would know, but no. But anyways, that's enough rambling for me. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, subscribe. And until then, and until then, I really do think I'm going to rewatch George of the Jungle. I haven't seen the movie. I, I don't think I've seen it in 10 years. All right, guys, that's all for me. See you guys next time.